conductor will be conducting, and what if the conductor slows down? Then the canned surround music track won't slow down with him. So Mark Pinsky took the challenge and decided to come up with a way to make a, a baton follow the conductor, uh, Maestro Dirk Meyer. So he hasn't seen this yet. Maybe he'll see this video. So Mark's decided to use the Wii controller. And uh, and can we make the numbers? Sure. Go? So if we if I move this baton, you'll be able to see. We're just going to turn it like this. So every single time Keith goes and moves the Wii mote, you can see that it's receiving a whole bunch of data. And the idea of what we're going to do with this is we're just going to go ahead and calculate the time it takes for every single time that he moves the baton and that will be used to change the tempo. And theoretically, when I slice up the track, the surround track in um, Ableton Live, then it will know where each beat lies. And it will slow down and speed up according to uh, uh, algorithms to uh, make this work. So we're going to give this a whirl and uh, you get an idea what this is. So what you're going to hear is a mock-up of the track with a mock-up stereo and the electronic track. And we're going to record this data just to work with. It's not really syncing yet. We haven't got, we haven't figured that out yet. It, the exact sync hardware right. part. Okay, so I'm not going to get a tree time, I don't think. So it's just going to start. Two, ready, and... <laughs> So this is basically what we went and uh, and just recorded. So as Keith was conducting, um, we were capturing basically nine separate channels of, of information that we could use to control anything from the tempo or can be used as a basis of controlling anything from visuals, panning, whatever, whatever Keith and Nathan choose. And if we go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit, we can actually take a pretty good close look at, at the stuff that we actually got. And uh, let's, this is a good one right here. Maybe we'll scroll in a little bit further. And as we... There was one on there that was, uh, that I could really clearly see the beats. I think it was this one right yeah. here. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. You can actually see the, the distinct peaks that of, was, yeah. when you move right. up and just, down. Just, that should not be too hard to get the, uh, the tempo from that data. And the thing which is interesting is when you, you look at the different controllers, you still see those same patterns, but it kind of arranges itself. Somewhere later. Right, different right, yeah. context. It's like, I think of it like different slices through a landscape. Like, you've got this data, and you're just looking at one slice at a time. But I, I, it might be interesting to even take all of this stuff and literally use it to generate some lines, to generate some elements that feed into the visuals. So, I mean, in he's, a way that's more sophisticated than your typical... He's uh, slicing cones up with planes. <laughs> I know he is already. <laughs> <laughs> in a way that's more sophisticated than your typical, you know, little uh, readout of the, of the volume. Right. Because you know? this is so much more nuanced. Like, this is the human touch. Yeah. You know, brought in weirdness organic yeah it's really right cool. nothing regular and it's all ones and zeros yeah